dear God in the heavens above who reigns supreme over all beings who gave us this world as a test to correct what we need to correct from our past lives I love you Hashem I will always love you and I've dedicated my life to your service ready to bow down to you at any time May you heal the nation of Israel Do light punishments And make the suffering less As to not demoralize us completely Because in the end the sins will bring depression The sins will bring heartache The sins will make you lose a child God forbid, Lo Aleinu God forbid, Lo Aleinu I repeat it to let you know how serious it is God give it and God take it away. Go ask anybody who lost a child. That pain, that pain is unmatched. But that pain also cleans a lot of sins. Because when you love something so much and you're so attached to it and it's taken away, you miss it. You long for it. And that's how you have to be with God. You have to be with God like you lost him, God forbid, and you just found him. With that kind of a happiness. You know, when I was a kid, I remember my parents lost me at the beach. Like an hour. I was like seven, eight beaches away. And it could have been bad. Because, you know, the world has a bunch of crazy people in it. Thank God, by the grace of God, God looked over me. Some lifeguard saw me like crying. I was like six, seven years old. And he helped me out. And they ended up making an announcement. My parents heard it and they ran over to this lifeguard. So I'll never forget when my father ran over. He was so upset and angry, you know. And that came from embarrassment that he lost me. But he didn't focus on the fact that now at least you found him. Now you lost your son, fine. But you found him. You should be the happiest guy in the world. So when my father came, my father started yelling at me, screaming at me, and like ready to hit me. And the lifeguard looked at him like, yo, you should be the happy. What are you so upset about? So the truth is he was really upset psychologically for his mistake. So instead of just saying, you know what, I should have been more careful and thank you God for finding my son, he got upset. And that's what is a killer. For the nation of Israel When you do not trust in God And know that God is running the show It's going to create tension I'll never forget There was someone in my family That's so anti-God And I told him Listen I can't talk to you anymore Because every time I talk to you You disrespect God You treat him like garbage God forbid a billion times Knowing that God's not going to strike man. That's where you get all your might And your power from It's like You know you act real tough and we'll, till we take you to the streets, you know, like one of these internet gangsters, you know what I mean? Who talk real tough over the computer, but go take him to say the same things in front of his opposition. He will not say a word. You understand? Fake. Fake world, yo. So this dude was like, since I stopped hanging out with him, he was like trying to say that I was dividing the family. And I was like, he's like, oh, you see, religion causes division. Religion causes division. I said, no, it doesn't. Fake religion causes division. The divide comes from you. Because you won't submit your will to the will of God. Because you think you're better than God. Because you're going to get up, bang on the table and say, I'm more merciful than God. I have mercy on gay people. And I'm looking at you laughing. Like, God also has mercy on gay people. That's why they're alive. He gives them years and years and years to fix what they need to fix. But eventually, when they don't fix it, the punishment comes. And not only that, bro, man, yo, the only sin I know of that they made it popular to do it. Man, I've never seen a sin where they actually popularized it to such a way that they made it like pride, like gay pride. Show me another sin that somebody takes pride in. Show me another sin that they're going to boast and brag about. Show me another sin they're going to come with a flag. Wave it up to Shamayim screaming out, we're free. <laughs> what universe do we live in? Yo, yo, think about this, man. Hashem gave every gay person in this gay pride, pride parade 
a body and a soul and a chance to fix what they need to fix. And look how ungrateful they are to God, yo. They're going to come to you, Shalayim, his most favorite city in the universe. And they're going to march over there, dressed half naked, getting the residents upset, causing division and strife. And then when you protest because you live there and you don't want your kids to see it, they're going to claim that you're the psycho, that you're the racist, that you're the bigot. Meanwhile, all those things they call you, they do that to God. They call God a racist and a big chas v'chalila. But that's what they do. That's why their end is endless. Maybe I should name this talk that. The end of the wicked is endless. I like that, yo. That's what you're going to do. It's one thing to sin in private, feel ashamed, to cry, repent. And work on it. And it's another thing to do it in the eyes of God and flaunt it. That's disgusting. And may God have mercy on your soul. Because if he doesn't, he's going to head stomp you to hell heavy. You don't understand, man. We see it in this world, the kind of punishments that Hashem gives out. And I remember one time there was this great big sadiq. I don't want to mess up the name. Either Rabbi Akiva or one of the rabbis from the uh, that the Romans killed. And they were murdering him, destroying him, torturing him. And I remember he looked at one of the guys torturing him. And he said to the guy, I'm a big Sadiq. And I did everything right. I followed the word of God with my heart and soul. And look at my end. Just imagine what your end is going to be like. And this soldier got nervous, yo. It hit a nerve in his heart. And he understood, wow, he's right. This was like a big Sadiq. Look at his end. He's burning alive, yo. What's going to be your end? Exactly, yo. You don't understand, man. This world is no joke. Within one nanosecond, you can go from watching a football game to standing in the court of heaven, ready to be judged for your life, dear. Let me just repeat what I just said. You could be chilling with your boys, getting high, getting drunk, chilling. God forbid, die. In a second, it takes a second, somebody can get, God forbid, like that, boom, and die. And now, you went from that scene, that scenario, to standing in front of God, ready to be judged for everything you did in this world. Good luck. Good luck. Let me break down the two different kinds of sinners. There's one sinner who's arrogant, rude, smug, and doesn't care. The other sinner falls to his temptations. He feels regret, but continuously finds himself steeped in the same sin. But he tries to get out of it. But he feels bad. But he does chuba. Great. So now you have these two kind of sinners. The sinner that's rude and arrogant and smug. He's done. He's done. And I'm going to show it to you right now. Watch. <clears throat> Number one. The generation of the flood Hashem destroyed the whole world With a flood Why? Because they sat and studied Torah? No Because they were wicked Evil They robbed They killed And they worshipped idols Then you have the generation of separation He destroyed them Scattered them throughout the world Turned some of them into monkeys Then you have when the name uh, Amalek is mentioned in the Torah Right away they're wicked Sodom Right away when they're mentioned Wicked you have Lavan, calls himself Lavan to come like righteous and pure. He's the most wicked. See little secrets into the wicked, how they try to trick and deceive like Lavan did. And Hashem made a miracle that nah, he tried to deceive Jacob and Jacob deceived him. What a lesson we learned with your eyes. My goodness, yo. For myself and any other guy out there in the world, yo, listen to me and listen to me carefully, bro. A sexy woman is your enemy. Let me repeat that right now so you understand what I'm saying. A sexy woman is your enemy because a sexy woman will seduce you. A sexy woman will want you to have relations with her. A sexy woman will want you to be intimate with her. A sexy woman will act dirty. A sexy woman will act naughty. A sexy woman will act immorally. And those things Hashem cannot stand. You know why? Because it spills sperm. Because you act like an animal. 
because you sin in front of God while he's looking and you don't even feel embarrassed. Yo, there was a story one time of a guy who was going to go cheat on his wife. And when he went the first time to go cheat, there was a baby in the hotel room. He got nervous. He ran away. The second time he came, what was there? There was uh, the maid came. And the maid looked him in the eye. He felt uncomfortable. He ran away. Finally, the third time he came, the prostitute said to him, listen, we're doing it this time or that's it. I'm done. What is this game? Every time you see somebody, you run. No, no, no. I promise. I promise. If I see any person or anything like that, I'll still do the sin. They walk into the room and who's on the bed? A little black dog. And this little black dog keeps staring at him. Wherever he walks, the dog looks at him. So he said to the prostitute, I can't do the sin. So the prostitute said to him, are you kidding me? He said, I'm sorry. And he ran away. Long story short, 10, 20, 30 years later, he died. He went in front of God. He went to go walk into heaven clean. Big Sadiq here. Yeah, he tried. He's going to cheat on his wife and didn't do it. It's Sadiq. He comes to walk into heaven. They stop him. We have orders from Shammai that you're not allowed to enter. Why? Right away, Hashem appears and Hashem said to him, Why? Because you think a dog is better than you. That's why. Yo, this guy goes, God, 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 are you kidding me? Why would you say that? Hashem, you're the God of justice. You're the God of truth. You're the God of honesty. I would never say that. He goes, you didn't have to say it. You said it with your actions, right? Because why didn't you do that final sin? You were ready to do that sin, but what prevented you? The eyes of the dog prevented you from doing it. You felt shame because the dog was watching you. But what about me? I was watching the whole time with the maid, with the baby, and with the dog. How come you didn't feel shame when I was watching? Because you became like an animal. Do you understand? That's why with the dog, you connected. He claimed that territory. You got nervous. You bounced like an animal. Yo, Hashem just wants what's best for his children, man. I'm telling you right now. He doesn't want to murder. He doesn't want to destroy. I was telling you, yo, Korach. He lived another 65 years. Not Korach, I'm sorry. Terach. He lived another 65 years. He's not mentioned in the Torah. Why? He was alive for 65 years. Something happened. He was wicked. Considered dead. They didn't even want to mention him. You understand? that good cheese sandwich that I left in the oven that I told my father to bring to her in five minutes. By now, she should already have it. Hopefully, she's eating it and enjoying it. And I appreciate you always, Hashem. And I want the people listening to understand, yo, I just asked God to help me with a grilled cheese sandwich. I go, oh, you're going to waste a prayer on a grilled cheese sandwich? Of course, that's my mother and I love her and I want her to enjoy the food. And who's in control of the food and how it tastes? God, you could see Yo, a plum that looks like the juiciest, most delicious plum, and it can taste terrible. Usually it doesn't happen, but if Hashem wants, it can happen. I'll prove it to you. Hashem took bitter and bitter and turned it into sweet waters of Mara. <laughs> he controls nature. He's the master of it all, yo. You better fall back. Trust him. And do the right thing. And if you do that, your enemies will make peace with you. When you see your enemy's donkey fall, pick it up. Not your enemy that wants to murder your children like these Palestinian terrorists. No. You see him, you murder him. Guy in the building you have beef with. I don't know. Something happened. He gives you a dirty look. You give him a dirty look. So these fake enemies, because a guy like this, help him. He'll make peace. One of the most beautiful blessings in the universe. Yo, I promise you. Here, you want to see a beautiful prayer to say to God? Let me show you. Dear God, may you always give me the merit to be surrounded by peace. May you always place peace in my heart. May you always make me aware that if I want love in my life, to seek peace and pursue it. I don't know any other mitzvah. It says seek it. Seek it and pursue it. It doesn't even say that about Shabbat. It doesn't say seek and pursue Shabbat. It says keep Shabbat. Remember to keep the Shabbat.
peace, peace, bro. You understand? And Shabbat brings peace. You know why? Because Shabbat is the source of all blessings. And the biggest blessing is peace. It's the seal of all blessings. And may you give me the merit to be surrounded by peace always. I love you. Man, let me tell you something. When I go to move to Israel, my love for you is going to grow even more. I don't know how it could, but it will. It will. There's something special in Israel. Just even breathing the air makes you wiser. It's where God's spirit is concentrated the most. It's the holy land. Yo, yo, as evil as this world is, they'll let you know it's the holy land. And I want to tell you something right now that's so deep and dope about the Satan, but it's so beautiful. I used to think the Satan was like some dirty, nasty, rude, arrogant pig that just wanted you to sin and murder you. No, that's not who he is. He's a messenger and a servant of God. And all he does is he judges the ones that God tells him to judge. So if you notice, the Satan is gonna like attack you for not keeping Shabbat. He's gonna be like a big Sadiq. He's gonna come. If you're arrogant and rude, Hashem is gonna give him the permission to expose you and to punish you for five billion things you did breaking Shabbat. You understand? Because when you judge people harshly, Hashem will judge you harshly. And when he needs to judge harshly, he doesn't even do it. He sends the Satan to do it. So the Satan is a faithful servant to God. So basically what I'm saying is that the Satan, if the Satan tried to defeat you, right, your whole life, make you sit here, make you sit there, bring you women, kind of try to make you break Shabbat, this, that, and, the, and you defeat him. He is going to shake your hand, give you a hug, and say, great job. That's it. That's his, that's his job. His job is to prevent you from going to heaven. But if you defeat him, he respects that. You know why? Because he loves Hashem. That's why. And they say that in the end of days, Hashem is going to slaughter the Satan. Who knows? That spirit might be changed into a holy angel. And he'll be able to reap the rewards of doing his job. Only Hashem can make these calculations, yo. The calculations I can make is that the day Mashiach comes, it's going to be maybe 9, 9 o'clock at night, something like that. At night, and I don't know where the sun is gonna rise in the middle of the night. That I could tell you. Oh, how do you know? Oh, you think you're a prophet? Oh, you're gonna come and tell the people to let come in the middle of the night? Oh, really? <laughs> it's in the prophets. What are you talking about, bro? Go read the book of prophets and you're gonna understand the power and the might of God's word because it's His word. That's manifest. The prophet is just to do it. You see, because if Hashem wanted, he'll come right now to all the wicked Rishayim in the world and yell at them and they'll all freeze, turn into stone and crack. <coughs> He's not going to do it, yo. He's not going to do it. You know why? Because that messes up the test. It has to be a test. And you know how we do the test? By letting you get away with the sin over and over and over. To the point that you feel so comfortable that now we're gonna grab you. Bait car. That's what a bait car is, you understand? Think about the genius of a bait car. They put the most beautiful car in a high crime neighborhood, knowing that these kids are gonna steal it, yo. And one by one, they catch them like flies, yo. Like flies. Why? Because these kids got way too comfortable with the crime. Any normal criminal that would walk by and see a car open with the keys in it running would say so far away from this car, you have no idea. But the ones that feel comfortable, the ones that have no fear of God, that's what, those are the ones that do it. Don't be a thief. Don't be a thief. I'm telling you, the generation of the flood was destroyed because of thievery. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yeah, yeah, there was idolatry, adultery, sex crimes, whatever you want, but check. The final decision was rendered. Why? Because they treated people like trash. They oppressed the poor and made injustice. Just like you see today. Be careful, bro. Because if you don't think the end could be super soon, you're super bugging. Because it super could be. Truth, justice, and peace. The three pillars of life have been cracked. And when those three pillars are cracked... 
there's a very good chance the earth could fall. The only reason it's not falling is because Hashem is holding it up. Letting us know that even though we're sinning, He still has mercy on us. Killed a Jew in Jerusalem the other day. Going to Shiva. Planted bombs. Dogs barking outside. <laughs> In a dog park across the street from where I stay at. Yo, these people are tripping. And I even know that God is in control of the dogs barking. Crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy how Hashem does it. How you run the world, the Kaddish Baruch Hu impresses me. You would think I get frustrated that dogs bark at the dog park. It's injustice. The owners are rude. This, that, nah. It highlights to me how real Hashem is. Because again, like we said before, He lets you get away with the crime where you feel arrogant. You feel like you own the place. You don't own the place. A lot of people live here. And your dogs bother us. You understand? But God is watching. And when you tell them God is watching, you know what they tell you? I'm an atheist. You're an atheist? Beautiful. One day God is going to introduce you to karma. And I got two words for you. Good luck, bro. Because you always get what you give. You want to be a jerk? God will send the Satan to act like that with you. Don't ever get it twisted, yo. What goes around comes around heavy. We see it. We know it. And we live it. The wheels of justice may turn slow. But you should always know to put your ego low and know that God is running the show. The wheels of justice do turn slow, but eventually the justice will be served. Go ask every Rasha that's dead in Shamayim that can come back and tell us what it's like to be a sinner and to be in heaven getting their punishment. My goodness. They say the punishment over there is a lot worse than the punishment over here. Over here, you can get hit so many times, God forbid you'll pass out. The physical pain will eventually go. But here, it's a spiritual pain. You can't pass out. You're going to have to eat every single second of suffering. My goodness, have mercy don't sin I told you there was a book called it was a bestseller called The Secret about 200 pages basically think good it'll be good I'm writing a book called The Real Secret it's not even 226 pages it's not even 200 pages it's not even 100 pages it's not even 50 40 30 20 10 not even two page one page two words The Real Secret don't sin. How apropos when they say easier said than done. Don't sin. For sure you'll be granted peace, grace, honor. God will raise you above the other nations and place you in the highest heights, shining like a beautiful star. I love you, Hashem. I appreciate you giving me the time to make this talk. And I want to just talk a little bit more about your beauty, your might, your glory, and your grace. You sustain us, Hashem. You sustain us. Without you, what will we be? Like I heard this rabbi say, oh, God needs us. (laughs) Yo, the disrespect, yo, when they come with this big beard... Black hat, yo, and they convinced some of my friends to think like this. I don't need a reward. I don't need a reward. No, nobody says you need a reward. The fact that God is wanting to give you to give you a reward, what are you gonna do? You're gonna deny his reward? God is gonna come to you with love, with grace, with honor, with a smile on his face and say, Here, my son, thank you so much for glorifying my name in this world. And you're gonna tell him, No, I'm good. That's not gonna happen, yo. And if it does, that disrespects him. That's what King Solomon said. 
super duper righteous, super duper wise. You should always know, learn from those who are greater. Now, when he spoke, wise people listened. Really, if you really want some good advice in this life, keep your mouth closed. There was a kid that grew up in my neighborhood, yo. Never spoke. The most quiet kid you'll ever meet. And in my neighborhood, it was tough. A lot of fights, a lot of gangs, a lot of rough, you know, just a lot of garbage. And this kid was good with everybody. And I remember I went to somebody older in the neighborhood and I said to him, I said, man, this dude gets along with everybody, yo. It's like, I've never seen anything like that. There's this guy fights with this guy. There was so much beef in my neighborhood, but this dude was chill. So this guy told me, you know why? Because he minds his business and keeps his mouth closed. This is a boy who told me this, you understand? Even the non-Jews understand, man. When you put your ego down and make peace, you're blessed. And man, I have that merit every second of my day to do it. Very difficult, but if God wants, He can put a spirit in you, a peace, to help you get closer to Him. And the way He does that is when you do for Him, when you show Him that you love Him, and when you dedicate your life to Him, and you try to get other people to dedicate their life to him as well. That's when you're going to be blessed by the kingdom of heaven. That's when Hashem is going to send angels to protect you. That's when Hashem is going to send angels to make sure the food you eat tastes better than it would have. That's when Hashem is going to dispatch his angels to guide you, to escort you, and to be with you. But the truth is, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that the holiest ones, they don't get angels. They get you. And that's what I want. I want to be on such a level that I have the merit to study with you one-on-one -on -one and to be with you and to soak up your knowledge direct. And as a human being, you can't do it. You cannot do it. Anybody who sees his face will die. You understand the holiness of God only when you're a spirit and the physical body is removed, then you can get that reward. But one day, and God willing, I'll be alive to see it. Amen. Can you hear that song? When the Mashiach comes, then you'll get it. Then you'll get the most beautiful feeling in the world. Complete peace. No temptation to sin. Paradise in your hands. Amen. One kid came up to me, Coach, why is it so hard to keep Shabbat? Because the reward is endless. That's why. When it's something so valuable, you gotta work for it. It's not gonna just fall in your lap. I'm gonna just give it to you, you just to give it to you. No. You gotta work for it. And you gotta fix what you need to fix. May we all have the merit to do it. Peace on Israel always. Protect us, love us. Rest in peace to the Jew that was recently murdered by the Palestinian enemy. God give us the strength and power to thwart every attack. God give us the strength and power to protect ourselves. But if you really want to know where the strength and power comes from, it comes from keeping his covenant following his word and trusting in him if we did that as a nation we'll have the peace that we want trust me trust me he will make our enemies like Avimelech did to Abraham look up to us and respect us where they wouldn't cause any wars they wouldn't cause any fights but we have to do the right thing to merit that may it happen amen can you at song I love you Hashem forever and for always you know it I just want the world to know it it's by the grace of your might and by the knowledge of your wisdom that I'm allowed to live and I thank you for that and may I take all the time I have left in this world and use it 
and dedicated service to you, to serve you with every ounce of my soul. I love you, because it's for me. And I need you. And I want you to humble our enemies and avenge our debts. To show the world that we are your chosen son, your most beloved, your treasured nation for eternity, the God of Israel. Don't ever forget it, there's no other name he calls himself by, only by the God of Israel. I'm blessed to be part of that nation. Be with me, stay with me, and protect me always, Hashem. Love you.